Now we're going to be taking a look at finding the cross product of two algebraic vectors. The last time that we did the cross product was with the geometric version. Okay, so um, if we're given the two vectors, and in this case we're going to take a look at um, you know the algebraic method. So we'll use a general case. Okay, to start with here. So we've got two vectors, a and b. All right, we know that the cross product between these two is geometrically, we look at the magnitudes, the product of the magnitudes with the uh, sine theta of the angle between them, okay? And we know that it follows the right-hand rule for its direction. Okay, so what we're going to do is I'm going to take you through an example where we do a specific case and find out what we have, okay, uh, algebraically. So let's say we want to find the cross product, okay, uh, if let's say our one vector is vector 1, 2, 3, and the other vector, we'll just make it uh, somewhat simple, we'll go negative 3, 2, one. Okay, so the first thing we have to do is we have to take a look at what the magnitude is going to be between them. So we know that the magnitude as above is the product of the, um, the magnitudes individually and sine of the theta between them. Okay, um, and we're also going to take a look at the right hand rule the direction okay we have to kind uh, take a look and make sure that we have a vector that is perpendicular oops the vector needs to be let's write this down needs to be perpendicular to a and perpendicular to b so we'll take a look at that secondly okay first off if we take a look at the magnitudes one of the things we need to note, all right, we can calculate the magnitudes of A and B, but let's take a look at sine theta. What we're going to do is we're going to look at this Pythagorean identity. We know that sine squared theta plus cos squared theta is equal to 1. So we have sine squared theta is equal to 1 minus cos squared theta, all right, and sine squared theta. All right, let's take a look. Sine squared theta, or sine theta, is equal to the square root of 1 minus cos squared theta. Okay, now very quickly we know that um, we're dealing with the positive uh, sine squared theta because um, we know that the angle between the two vectors is basically between 0 and 180 degrees. And with the cast rule, we can see that sine is going to be positive in both the first and the second quadrant. So we just have to worry about that. All right. Now, also, so this is the first part we look at here. The second thing is when we look at cos theta using the dot product, we know that that's the dot product of A and B divided by the product of their magnitudes. All right, so we're going to substitute that back into our formula for sine theta. All right, and then that way we can calculate the dot product, we can calculate the magnitudes itself. Okay, so let's take a look at uh, what we have the magnitude itself of the vector we're looking for. Okay, the magnitude of A, we can see that's 1 plus 4 plus 9, and magnitude of B. We're basically just going backwards, all right, 9 plus 4 plus 1, okay? And now for sine theta, we use a bigger line here, a bigger root symbol. We've got 1 minus, okay, and we're going to be using this down here, so it's going to be squared. So A dot B, so we have negative 3 plus 4 plus 3 all over the magnitudes and we've already seen the magnitudes we can just add those up we've got 14 in each case and that's going to be squared 
okay? So let's see what we have. These square roots are the same. You can see that it's 14 and 14, so we know that the, since it's the square squared, okay, the square root squared, we know that that's just 14 on the outside. We're going to do some simplifications on the inside, but let's take a look and see what we have first. All right, we've got a 4 over 14 squared. We want to simplify this. We're going to have a common denominator for the uh, 1. So we know that's 14 squared over 14 squared minus, I'll just do the 4 squared already, 14 squared there. All right. We have, you can see in the denominator inside the square root bracket, it's 14 squared. Well, the whole thing is being square rooted. So that answer is just 14. So we take that outside of the square root. It's just 14 over 14 there. We're left with inside the denominator is 14 squared. That's 196 minus a 16. So basically, we are left with the magnitude of what we want okay, of the cross product is going to be 100, or the square root of 180 degrees, okay? Now, if we just simplify this a little bit, all right, this is inside the bracket, okay? We have um, uh, 18, we know, is uh, 9 times 20 here, the 180. So we take the square root of 9, you've got 3. 20 is 4 times 5, so we can take the square root of 4, um, and that becomes 6 root 5. Okay, we can see that later. We'll, we'll need this when we simplify, uh, when we find our actual vector itself. But what we have here is that the magnitude of our cross product needs to be 6 root 5. All right, now, we need the direction. So for the direction, we know that for our vector, we'll call it x, y, z, our normal vector, right, needs to be normal to a and to b. So we have that n dot a is equal to 0, and we have n dot b is also equal to 0, okay? So we have, in this first case, x plus 2y plus 3z equals 0. In the second, negative 3x plus 2y plus z equals 0. All right? And if you remember from a previous lesson, the normal itself, we have an infinite number of, of uh, normals to the plane, basically defined by vectors a and b. So what we're going to do is we're going to say let x uh, be equal to 1 in this case. So our first equation turns out to be 1 plus 2y plus 3z is equal to 0. Our second equation then is negative 3 plus 2y plus z is equal to 0. And what I'm going to do to solve for y and z in this case is we'll do elimination. So we'll subtract. So we have 4, 0, plus 2z is equal to 0. So in this case, z is equal to negative 2. All right. So if z is equal to negative 2 here, we're going to sub z into our equation 1. And we have 1 plus 2y minus 6 is equal to 0. 2y minus 5 is equal to 0. And we end up with y equals 5 over 2. So what we found out is that we have a normal vector to a and b that is 1, 5 over 2, and negative 2. All right? We need to make sure that this normal vector has the same magnitude as 6 root 5. So what we do is we check the magnitude. So the magnitude of our normal vector we can see is 1 plus 25 over 4 plus 4, or the square root of, right? So we have 4 
plus 25 plus 16 over 4. Uh, that is 2045 over 4 square root. And so when we start to simplify these out, we can we see that 45 is 9 times 5. So we've got 3 on the outside because then we do the square root of 9. All right. The 4 in the denominator, the square root of that is 2. So basically our normal vector, all right, isn't the right size yet. But what we do is just a scalar multiple of the above. We need this, okay, to somehow be equal to 6 root 5. So you can see that all you need to do is when you take a look, you try to get the 6 root 5. If we multiply the magnitude of n by 4, right, so multiply both sides by 4, so you can take a look at it, all right, this reduces 2, 2 times 3 is 6 root 5, okay? So this is the magnitude that we're looking for, all right? This was from above. We knew that the magnitude of our cross product needed to be 6 root 5. We just made sure that it was, and we know that our vector, once we multiply um, our original n, the one that we found out, by 4, Okay, our cross product, I'll change that, A cross B is equal to 4, 10, negative 8. Okay, multiplying the N by 4, you can see that that's what it works out to be. All right, the only thing that we have, we've got, the, we've got that it's perpendicular to A and B, but the only thing that we don't have is whether it's one direction or the other direction, right? So it could be this. Sorry, I said the magnitude. Here, I'll take those out. This is actually the cross product, okay? It could be this one, or it could be negative 4, negative 10, and 8. And the way to find that one out is basically to draw the, draw the, um, the vectors that we have out and use the right-hand rule on it, okay? Uh, but anyway, these are them. There is a, you can see how we took, and I'll just kind of move this up a little bit to show it. This was a very, very long process. You could see to do this, all right? And once upon a time, somebody did this process and realized they did the process for every vector. That means they did it with these general numbers in them, okay? The A's and the B ones and twos and threes, all right? And they came up with a simple formula to come up with the right-hand rule and the correct magnitude in general. All right, in general, for any vector a, a1, a2, a3, and vector b, b1, b2, b3, all right, the algebraic formula for the cross product is a2 times b3 minus a3 times b2. That's the x component. The y component, a3 times b1 minus a1 times b3. And the z component is a1 times b2 minus a2 times B1. This is the formula you need to know. All right. Now, we can check it out, and then I can show you maybe there are some ways to memorize it, to have it, but this is the, um, this is the cross product, okay? If we were to uh, figure out which of these is the correct cross product, 
all right, who has the correct direction. We take a look at our original vectors again, one, two, three we had, and vector B was negative two, uh, three, two, and one, okay? The cross product, if you look at this, okay, A2 times B3, well, that's right here, A2 times B3. So that's two, all right, minus A3 times B2. That's this one right here, two times three, that's a six, all right? Take a look at the y component. A3 times B1. A3 is 3. B1 is negative 3, so we have negative 9. Minus A1 times B3. Well, that's minus 1. A1 times B2. That's 1. Minus A2. Oops, sorry. That's not 1. It's actually 2. A2 times B1. Negative 3 times 2. Well, that'd be a plus 6 at the end. And so you can see the cross product that we need is negative 4, negative 10, and 8. The second one right here. All right. This formula gives us the right-hand rule that it's proper. Okay, the correct right-hand rule, the direction. And you can see that it gives us the, um, the, the correct magnitude. All right. Um, so that's it right there. Now, how do we memorize these things? Okay. I like writing my vectors vertically like I did up here. All right. And then I can see it if I'm looking for the first vector and I'll try to do this with, um, or the first component, I'll do it with, um, uh, with my, um, highlighter here. Okay. If I'm looking for x, then I'm going to multiply these together, right? And the subtraction. Then if I'm looking for my y, right? My y's, I don't worry about anything with the y's. And then I just go over to my right again, and I have to do that one minus that one, okay? And finally, with my Z, I keep moving over to the next side as well. My Zs are covered up, so that means I have, oops, <laughs> I went a little too far. I'm looking at this one minus that one, okay? So that's just me, all right? Some people like to write out, you know, they start with the A2, A3, A1, and A2. Then they go B2, B3, B1, B2, right? So they do this. All the arrows that are going down to the right, okay, A2 times B3. Then you subtract all the arrows that go up to the right, B2 times B3. That's the X. Move over to the middle one, right? So you have your X components in there, your Y components are in there, your Z components are in there. You have to be comfortable with what you're doing, okay, and how you're doing it. All right. Now, I'm going to leave. I've got an example for you, and I'll just talk about it over here. All right. And what I'd like you to do is I want you to go through the Pythagorean or the, um, the cross product with this example. OK, so if we take a look at again, we've got the area of parallelograms and triangles. Why are we talking about the area of parallelograms and triangles? Well, remember that the definition of the cross product is this area of the, the magnitude is the area of the parallelogram that's formed with these sides, right? So that means 
the area of a parallelogram is the magnitude of the cross product. If we're looking for a triangle in this case, you just divide by two, right? Because the triangle is half of the area of the parallelogram, okay? So what I want you to do is to make sure that you can go through, find the correct vectors from these points. Remember that you need to have the vectors starting at tail to tail, okay? Make sure you can see where we get each of the components from, all right? And then I'm sure the area would be a lot easier. All right, so try your hand at those. Make sure that you understand how to do the cross product algebraically.